as established, grouping data together is very important. And when talking about objects in JavaScript, we understand that in any programming language, objects are extremely important. Now in JavaScript, an array is an object and arrays have their place. You've only scratched the surface with what you can do with arrays, but arrays are very, very good at what they do, which is organizing similar typed data. The problem comes when you really need some definition. Looking at a whole row of bracketed numbers and trying to figure out what that number returns is very difficult to read for a human being when it comes to complex applications. So what we need to do is be more literal at this point. You need to be able to describe the data you are fetching. This is a lot more like creating a program that a human being can read. You have to remember that yes, arrays have their place. We want more descriptive information about what data we are fetching. This is absolutely crucial in building complex applications. So to create an object is very simple. You open and close your parentheses or curly brackets. This is called an object literal because we're literally defining an object. And if you wanted to create an array, you pop in the square brackets, which is the array literal, because you're literally defining or creating an array. But if I was to create this object right here, I would not be able to reference that object later on in my program. The reason being is because it's not stored in a box and you need to store things in boxes and then your program can go fetch the box and open it up. So let's create a box. I'm gonna say var to create the box. We need to stamp a label on that box, which we will call this variable obj, short for object, and assign a value. And again, I just open and close my object literal and then end with a semicolon. This will then define an empty object within that box. Now, when I call obj, you'll notice that this variable contains an object and there it is. Now, the issue is it doesn't contain any information and we can dynamically add data or properties into this object. But for right now, I want to actually define those properties directly when I assign it to the variable, when I put it in the box. So what I'm going to do is now that I've created that box is target the box and assign a new value. So take whatever's in that box and delete it and then replace it with what I'm about to write here. And again, I'm gonna open and close my object literal. And now I'm gonna define a few properties. Now this lecture isn't going to go into methods because you haven't learned fully about functions yet. But keep this nice and basic. We're gonna put in primitive data, basic data into our object. Okay. So what we can do is we can type in the name of the key. Keys are very important. We use keys to access values within our object. Think of them as keywords. We'll look more at this in just a second and you'll see their importance immediately. So I'm gonna create a first property called number. So I can target this keyword and extract the value that's stored within this key. Now to assign a value to a key, what you need to do is put in the colon. So with variables, you use the equal sign to assign a value. However, within an object, within those object literal parentheses, you define a key and you assign a value using the colon, not the equal sign, but the colon. And then I can put in some primitive data. For example, a number. And then I can define another key and value pair but I must separate them out, not with semicolons, but just with a comma. Just like the array syntax, each element in the array that I defined was separated by a comma. Well, the key and value pairs in your objects are separated by a comma. So now I'll define, let's say a string and Again, I don't need to actually define the keyword because JavaScript knows what we're doing here as a string. I can just type it as I normally would. A lot like when you create a variable, for example, you don't put your variable name in quotes, you just type the name, which is fine. However, the value is different. If I was to type in a string like hello, well, this is not actually a string. This is now going to say, well, JavaScript is gonna say, well, okay, I know what this is. You're defining the keyword, 
which can be used to access this value. Now, this is the value that actually gets executed. And if I was to actually create this object, it would error because there is no variable on the window object called hello. There's no box. JavaScript is going to say, I'm going to look for this box, but I can't see it in the attic. I can't see it downstairs. can't see it anywhere in the house. So it's not in my house. So therefore, this box doesn't exist. So when you define a value, you must always make sure that if you're defining a string, it must be in quotation marks. And as I said, the value, not the keyword, not variable names, but the value of properties or keys in your objects and also defining strings within arrays and also assigning strings to variables you must always put them in double or single quotes, but they must be wrapped in quotes. Now I can say hello and it won't error. Then I'm also going to define another property, another key and value set. So you can see here, there's the key, there's the value, they're paired together. Key and value pair, key and value pair. And now I'm gonna do another key and value pair as well. So let's create another one. I can say formula. And in here, I can store a basic mathematical equation, five plus five. And then also I can create properties that don't really have any definition. They are undefined or null. Again, don't forget undefined, null and nan are primitive data. So we can say later. So this later property will be defined later, but for right now, it's going to be undefined. Now, please do note that what we have here is a key and value pair. There must always be a key and value pair. You cannot do this. You can't define a key and then say, well, I'll assign a value later. It's not like a variable. The JIT compiler knows what to do with a variable that you haven't assigned a value. It's null, it's undefined automatically. This is not allowed in terms of the JavaScript syntax within objects. So if you want to create, let's say an undefined, something like an empty box type, if you wanted to create an undefined property that isn't defined yet, but you will define it later, you need to either set it to null or undefined. Now, some browsers don't support undefined. It's sort of one of those weird ones, but null is largely the supported one. But however, null or undefined is acceptable. And what it means is that this property does not have any definition. Essentially, it's just empty and waiting to be filled up with data at a later date. So now when I create this object, you'll notice we've created an object with four properties. We have the number property, the string property, the formula property, and the later property, all of which are defined as properties because they contain primitive data. If one of these keywords, one of these keys contained a function, we call it a method. So a key and value pair and all that key returns is primitive data, we call it a property. If you have a key and value pair where you have the key and the value is a function, we call that key and value pair a method. So now that we've established this, let's go ahead and start extracting data out of our object. So first of all, we need to target the box that contains our object. So I type in obj, which will tell the JavaScript JIT compiler, go fetch that box, open it up. We want some information out of that specific box. And once we have this box, unlike arrays, what we do is we pop in the dot syntax. So you can just say dot and then type in the keyword. And again, this doesn't have to be a string. It's just like calling a variable and naming a variable and so on and so forth. You don't put this in quotation marks. Instead, what you do is you just type it in. So let's go ahead and fetch the first property, which is number. So it's going to look inside that box and say, ah, we have in here an object and in that object we have lots and lots of keywords and we can target those keywords and extract the data stored within. So here you can now see that we are targeting that object, pulling out the number properties value, which is 999. And immediately you notice that 
is a lot more literal than arrays. I can see obj.number and it's a lot more literal than arrays, which is just the square brackets and then you pop in a number to pull out a value that has an index. So it's a lot more easier for me to read this particular program. And on top of that, we can also change this. So I can say string, pop out the string. You can also get the formula, which it will not return the equation again. What it will do is it will just give us the return value of the formula. And also we can pull out the later properties value, which is null, which means that this property is not defined. It has no definition. Null is technically a value, but it's saying this property, this keyword stores no value. Now also there is another way to extract information out of an object and that's to use the square bracket syntax again. So just like arrays, we use the square brackets to not only define the array, but we also use the square brackets to pull elements out of the array. Well, we can also use those square brackets to extract information out of an object. And it's very, very beneficial and I will explain why and it will come in use later and you will understand why this is important. But however, if you wanted to very quickly take some data, just get some data out, this syntax is perfect. Now let's go ahead and say OBJ and open and close the square brackets. Now, no, we're not working with an array. This time we're working with an object and this object contains multiple keywords. Now, as we're going to be dynamically fetching the properties, you must then put the keyword in quotation marks. Otherwise it will treat it like JavaScript. And I'll explain this in just a second. But what we need to do is let's say I want to fetch the key number dynamically using the square brackets syntax, the way we write it, don't forget is we simply pop that in a string. So we say, go fetch the obj box variable that contains our object and dynamically fetch the number keyword. And that keyword will reveal a value, which in our case is 999. Now remember that whatever is in those square brackets is going to be treated as JavaScript, which will allow us to dynamically fetch keys out. So again, we have to be very careful because if I did not put in those quotation marks and just typed in the keyword, well, you're probably going, what's the problem with that? The problem is it's being treated as JavaScript. And so what JavaScript is going to do, it's going to say, okay, pull up that box, which contains our objects. So and now JavaScript is looking at that object. That's not a problem. The issue is when we go to fetch the key, the key, when it's defined like this, is actually not calling upon the key number. What it's trying to do is fetch a variable called number because it's treating this like JavaScript. And whenever you have, let's say, a word that's not wrapped in a string in JavaScript, it means you're trying to fetch something. You're trying to fetch a box, just like we say OBJ here. We're telling the JIT compiler, go fetch a box. Well, in the same manner, we're saying go fetch a box. And we want you to go fetch the box labeled number. But JavaScript's saying, I'm sorry, I've looked through the window object and I can't see it. It's not defined. So that's what's happening here. But we can use this to our advantage. So let's say that I create a variable and give it a name of get property. So I've just created an empty box with a label on it. That's all I've done. But now I'm going to assign a value. And that value is going to be a string. And let's make that string like one of these keywords right here, formula. So I want to say formula. So all that I'm doing is I'm creating an empty box and then assigning a value to it. So let's pull out get property now, which will fetch that box and that box will return the string formula. Real easy, real simple. Now I can use this variable, this box's value when trying to fetch a key out of my object. So let's go ahead and say OBJ, we target the box that contains the object in square brackets. I can then say 
call upon the get property variable. Go fetch that box. So what happens is JavaScript goes and fetches that box. It knows what box it's looking at. So it's seeing that object. But now what we do is we say, okay, we want to grab a value. But what it's doing here is it's saying, ah, oh, he wants to call another box. So it's going to fetch this box. And this box contains the string formula. So if you can imagine, just change this get property for the string formula, because that's what it's going to return. When we call it like so, it returns formula. Well, that's exactly what it's doing in the square brackets. It's calling it and returning the string formula. Then when it's finally got everything it needs, it executes that entire statement, which will pull back the formula, the value of that property, which is 10. If I hit return, boom we get the value 10. So we've dynamically fetched out information from our object by using a variable. This will become extremely important as we evolve in our career as JavaScript developers, because it is very, very useful. Trust me on this. Now I'm hoping that some of the more sharper viewers say, well, okay, when this square bracket syntax came up, it reminded me a lot about fetching elements out of arrays. And you'd be absolutely correct. Arrays are objects in JavaScript. But as we have seen, they do not define key names as it were. What they do is they define keys by numbers. So they go zero, one, two, and so forth. So if this was actually an array, it would say zero is nine, 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 one is the string hello, and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and just basically make a, a makeshift array, if you will. So I'm going to press that up arrow a few times to go through the commands, the statements that I've already written. And I'm going to change this to zero, then one, and we'll just end it there. So I have an array essentially with two values. Now, please do note, this isn't really an array in JavaScript. The reason being is because arrays come with all sorts of functions or methods associated with an array that allow you to do complex things. And also it has the length property, which is dynamically updated. So do note that there is a big difference between what we're doing here and an array, but essentially the data structure is the same. You have your elements and your elements have a number associated with them. It's as simple as that, which is ultimately a key and value pair. So what I can do now is say OBJ, put in the square brackets, whatever is in the square brackets will be treated as JavaScript. So if I put in zero, it's going to say, aha. He wants to fetch the key zero and there you go. So that's how you fetch out keys that are numbers. You don't have to start from zero with your own. You could say zero one one zero, let's say, and then you'd say zero one one zero. So you can use numbers for your keys. That's up to you whether you want to do that or not. But I like using keywords. It's a bit more literal. Now the JIT compiler has returned something very, very funny, but please do note that ultimately it is actually correct. It is functioning correctly. I'm not sure why one is hello and 72 is 9999. I guess I might have found a bug or broken Chrome, I don't know. But however, it's still okay, it's still functional. But please do bear that in mind. Now on top of that, please join me in the next lecture where we'll take a look at assigning values to already existing properties, creating new properties and assigning values to them. And also on top of that, we'll take a look at embedding objects.